Okay, so I have here a Sony vintage stereo receiver. This is an STR VX750. And I've already got it partially torn apart here, doing some troubleshooting. And uh, one thing you might notice is there's no power transformer in this unit. This one uses a switch mode power supply. Pretty advanced for its time because I think this came out in about 1984. Yeah, I look for a date back there. I don't see a date on the back of the unit. So anyhow, yeah, no big power transformer, just a switch mode power supply. And I've already verified that that's working fine. So what's going on with this thing is, as you can see, it has a display. It turns on and off okay. Power on, there's the display. The problem that I'm having is when I hit the uh, volume control down here, nothing ever happens. And it's hard to change modes. Uh, the bass and treble up here, they do absolutely nothing. The balance, absolutely nothing. So that's what I'm troubleshooting right now. Occasionally it does work. There are times where I can power this thing up and it will actually come on and work. It does tune station, so the radio is working. So I just need to troubleshoot and find out why the volume, balance, treble, and the rest of the switches up here, they're not working either. The, the tuner, the phono, you can't change modes. Nothing over here works whatsoever. Tuning sweep does work, and I believe AM, FM, yes, AM and FM does work. I think it's gonna have a, a key scan issue. And so I've got a, uh, a partial schematic just because uh, part of it is cut off in the service menu. Whoever scanned this, this portion, I think there's supposed to be an IC chip here, and it's kind of cut off, but hopefully I can get some troubleshooting on the switches right down here. We can figure out what's going on. Okay, well, you will not believe this. So I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and try to jump room. I checked the voltages. Everything's great. Check this out. It works perfect. So I wonder, does the balance work? Because I think it's all the way on one channel right now. Sure enough. It just simply needs a set of switches. Almost every switch on this board is bad. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just get a bunch of these ordered. And we'll change them all out, and hopefully this thing will be good as new once again. Okay, so I ordered and received a bunch of these little tactile switches. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsolder all the switches on the board, and we'll go ahead and replace every single one of these defective tactile switches, and hopefully it'll get it up and running again. So let's go ahead and get all these unsoldered. Okay, there they are, all unsoldered. Now, let's just go ahead and pop them off. They should just lift off. Okay, well there are all the switches off of the board. Go ahead and mount the new switches and get them soldered up in place. Hopefully, that's the end of it. All right, there are 38 new switches. With any luck, they'll be just as easy as popping them off of the board. All right, now we just gotta go ahead and solder them up, put it back together and give it a test. Okay, every switch has been replaced. Every tact switch, that is. There are some 
latching switches. They all seem to be okay though. But every tack switch on the board has been replaced. So let's get it back in the unit, fire it up, hopefully with better results this time. Okay, so I have, uh, I have it back together. The volume works great. The balance, everything's working perfect, but it doesn't have any audio at startup until you turn the volume up quite a considerable level. But if I move the speaker contact relay, it absolutely cuts out. Then I've got to turn the volume up, up, and then it all of a sudden comes back in. So we're gonna have to pull that relay out. Just as soon as I touch it, audio goes out. So the contacts are probably gold flashed or silver plated, and they just need to be cleaned. And we'll do that with just a piece of paper, assuming I can get the relay open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unsolder it. We'll get it out of there, and then see if we can get it making good contact once again. Okay, well, taking the relay apart has been futile because this thing is ultrasonically bonded together. I dremeled it down. I can't get the stupid thing open. Oh my gosh, who makes something that is totally not serviceable? But anyhow, I went ahead and tried to get this thing open. Not going to happen. I can't find a suitable replacement, but I found a non-suitable replacement. Now this one is a four pole double throw relay and it has a 24 volt coil. So what I did, I kind of boogered up the bottom here, attached some leads to it. Of course those got to go back because the pin fitment is different. But anyhow, I've got some leads attached to it and we're going to go ahead and try to make this thing fit back in the unit. It's probably going to stand up off the board by maybe a half an inch or so to get it to fit correctly, but I think it's going to serve the purpose. Well, from the bottom, it looks absolutely perfect. From the top, that's another story. Looking straight down, not much wrong. Yeah, it's standing up off the board just a little bit, but you know what? It's, it's secure on the board. It's really not moving around very much. So let's go ahead and fire this baby up. Make sure the contacts close and see if we get audio on both channels. Okay, here we go, power up. And I've got audio. Let's go ahead and tune it over to the right channel. And I've got audio on the right channel. And we'll go ahead and move this over to the left channel. Make sure we get audio on the left channel. And there's all the way to the left. And it's absolutely perfect. There we are, back on center channel. The thing absolutely sounds great. Okay, so before I ship this back out, I wanna go ahead and adjust the amplifier section. I want to adjust the bias on the left and right channels. And these are the instructions on how to adjust the bias. And then I want to go ahead and adjust the DC balance adjustment. So that is the instruction for the DC balance. Here is where the components are located that I'm going to adjust. So let me get my meter out and we'll make some measurements and do some adjustments. The unit has been warming up, so it's up to full operating temperature with no audio signal. So it's telling me I should adjust the left channel for 11 millivolts and the right channel for 11 millivolts. Let's see what we have at this point. So there is the left channel. I've got 46 millivolts on it right now. Now I'm not using their test points, but I'm going emitter to emitter, which is what they use for their test points. So I'm just gonna go down here to the left channel bias adjustment and dial it down until I get approximately 11 millivolts because this thing has been warm, it's idling right now. That's probably close enough, 10.9 millivolts. Let's go ahead and switch to the right channel at this point. Now on the right channel, I only have 6.6 .6 millivolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the bias up just a little bit on this one. So pretty darn close, 10.8 millivolts. I'm very happy with that. Now let's go ahead and check the DC balance adjust. So we just wanna make sure that we have zero volts offset on the speaker terminals. So as of right now, I've got three 
millivolts offset. All right, so that's pretty close. I've got 0.3 millivolts DC offset, 0.2 on the right channel. Let's go ahead and switch to the left channel. All right, so there is the left channel DC offset, negative eight millivolts. And we'll go ahead and adjust this pot right here. Try to get it down to zero. There it is, absolutely perfect. Zero, eh, minus 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, zero. Absolutely perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and put this unit back together and ship it back to the customer. All right, well, there it is, up and running. Everything is working great. I can go ahead and change the memory channels. Let's get a station in here. There's an AM station. There's an FM station. It's working absolutely perfectly. Look at that, the SCR VX750 up and running. So this was a matched companion to the CDP110, I believe it was, that I posted that I couldn't believe actually still worked after all of those years. Anyhow, there it is, all back and running. The thing works absolutely perfectly. Even the switch mode power supply over here is still running absolutely perfectly after all these years. This thing was new in like 1984 or 1985. There it is. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Sony STR-VX750. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and I respond when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Thank you so much for watching this video and making it to the end. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.